welcome to this instructional video on how to install Logger 7 trial available from Microfocus. In this video we will cover the primary prerequisites for installation as well as a live installation. Firstly, please be aware that the prerequisites shown in this video are for this example installation. Always check the Microfocus community site for the latest installation guides which will detail all prerequisites and adjustments needed for individual operating systems as well as the latest installation documentation. To find this documentation, please browse to community.microfocus.com, select Security, then ArcSite, then ArcSite Documentation, and finally Logger Documentation. On this page, you'll find the latest installation administration guides, as well as the supportability matrix and some handy guides for best practices. The first prerequisite we need to check is that the host name on the machine that you're installing Logger on is not localhost. Please ensure this has been changed before proceeding. The second step is to ensure that two additional packages are installed if they're not already. In this particular example, we've selected the CentOS server with GUI installation during operating system installation, and these are already present. However, if you need to install them, please run the following commands, yum install dash unzip and yum install dash font config backslash deja vu sans fonts as shown on the screen. Then we need to identify an installation directory and create a non-user and user group for the installation. In this example, I'll be using the opt arcsite directory, so I'll be using the make directory command to create that directory ahead of time. We then need to add the user group, and then we need to add the user and assign that user to that user group. Then we need to ensure the new user has rights to this installation directory by using the change owner command as shown on the screen. And finally, we need to adjust the permissions on the installer file to make sure that it's an executable file by that user. The second stage of prerequisites only applies to Red Hat or CentOS 7.1 or 7.2. To do this, please follow the steps on the screen to effectively remove the hash from the remove IPC line within the logind config file and ensure that it's set to no. When you've completed the commands, make sure that you restart the service by running the command at the bottom of the slides. Finally, we need to increase the user process limits. Navigate to the directory shown on the screen, etc security limits d, and open the file nproc.config file. Now, the starting two digits of this file may vary depending on your operating system. Some guidance is shown here on the slide. If there isn't a file already present, you can create one providing that it follows the same naming scheme as above. If the file already exists, delete any entries that are in there existing and then add the following commands. Ensure that you save the file, log bad out, log back in, and then you can run the ulimit space hyphen a command to verify the changes. The two lines that you're looking for is open files and this should read 65536. And the second one you're looking for is max user processes, which should read 10240. Now what we'll do is we'll jump to the demo environment and we can run through this live to show you how it would work in a production environment. As you can see from this demo environment, we've renamed the host name to Logger Trial. And now what we'll go through is just demonstrate what the files should look like that we talked about on the previous slides, just so you can get a feel of what they should look like and what should be present in those particular files. So the first file we're going to look at is the systemd directory and the logind config file which contains the remove IPC line. So in this example, I've already made the changes, so we're just going to cat the files. And if we do cat etc systemd, and then we want to cat the login d file. As you can see at the bottom here, we've got the remove IPC equals no line here, and we've removed the preceding hash to effectively make this particular variable active. The second file we're going to look at is the limits d file. So again, I've already made the changes on my particular file on this environment. So what we're going to do is cat the etc security limits d and the nproc file. Again, there is no other content in here apart from the files and the configs that we talked about on the previous slides. So we have the star tab soft tab nproc tab 1040, following down all the way to star tab hard tab no file tab 65536. As previously shown on the slides, we can actually check this has taken place by doing ulimit-a, 
and the two lines we're looking for are the max user processes of 10240 and the open files of 65536. Now what we're going to run through is the actual installation. So in this particular window on the right, I've already changed directory to the location of the ArcSight logger install file, and we're just going to run the bin file. What does it do? It'll run through the unpacker and then provide us with a GUI prompt of running it through the next steps. You can run this in console mode by doing the hyphen I console switch. And again, this is all detailed in the installation guide when you go to the community.microfocus.com website. When this page appears, all we want to do is ensure that all the introduction pieces are read and that you understand what the next steps are, click on next. The end user license agreement will then appear. Please read this carefully, scroll to the bottom once read, and then accept the terms of the license agreement and click next. Next we'll be asked where we want to install the location. So we need to check that we have at least 10 gigabyte storage available for this particular installation. On this drive we have plenty of storage available, but we also created a new directory for this. So we want to choose the ArcSight folder here. You can also type it in manually if you know the directory and click next. Locker will go through some pre-installation checks. So if any of the files that we've adjusted previously haven't been adjusted correctly, we will get a message to say that the prerequisites haven't been met and we need to make some additional changes. However, in this case, all the prerequisites have been correctly changed. So we can go ahead and click install. Once installation is completed, you'll be prompted with this screen, which is asking for a non-root username. In our example here, we created the user ArcSight, so we'll be entering this. It also asks for a HTTPS port. We'll leave this one as default, and the majority of customers will leave this as default. However, if you have a particular requirement to adjust your HTTPS port for communication, this is where you would change it. We're also are going to leave this default by configuring Logger as a service, as this allows the system to be able to start Logger automatically as part of system shutdown and startup. We then need to set the locale setting. In this example, we're going to leave it as English United States, and then we're going to be asked for a license file. Now, with the trial license, we don't actually need to enter a license file here, and it will default to a trial license. As detailed here, Logger will be installed with a trial license, also known as the instant on license. So leave this file uh, empty and then click the next button. You'll get a, an intervention required prompt on this particular screen. It's basically highlighting that there's no license file detected, and which, which is fine. So if we click continue and then click on next. Once initialization is complete, you'll be presented with this screen where if we just click next, we'll go through the configuration stage. This again can take a few minutes, so what we'll do is we'll cut back once configuration is complete. Once configuration is complete, you'll be prompted with the next screen, which will give you the details of the IP address or host name that you need to use to be able to connect to the logger interface. Make a note of this IP address and click done. Now to connect to the interface, if you open up a browser which has access to the logger server and enter in the URL bar, the IP address or host name that was detailed on the previous screen, and press enter. You may be prompted with an SSL security error. This is absolutely normal because at the moment we're using a default certificate to be able to connect to the web interface. You can upload your own certificate, so for the moment, just confirm the security exception. Now to log in, the initial login details are admin and password. When you first log in, you will be asked to change your password. Use something secure as this will be the primary admin password to access all the configuration and ensure that this is saved somewhere securely. Once you've confirmed the next screen, you'll be entered into the logger interface. And that sums up this video on how to get logger installed to a point where you can start ingesting some data. In the next video, we'll cover off setting up some receivers so you can send some event logs, such as syslog, to logger and start analyzing your data. Thank you for watching. Thank you.